Welcome back to the Scorecast, Cynics. It is Tim, Jacko, and we've got special friend Ross Edgley back in because we get a lot of questions about um, can you build muscle mass with just calisthenics, just body weight? And it is something that we certainly do, but exhibit A and B suggest <laughs> that this man knows a thing or two about building muscle, so we've got in the experts. So yeah, it doesn't matter what your workout is, there are always three principles to muscular hypertrophy, and they can broken, be broken down into the following. First is mechanical tension. This is almost, to put it in layman's terms, your power lifting. It's just strength training your body's ability to generate force. Next, you have metabolic stress, which is more bodybuilding centric, uh, higher rep ranges, and that's kind of where you're you know, chasing the pump, basically. Drop sets, cluster sets, all those types of things. And then lastly, muscle damage. Um, eccentric contractions, uh, basically where you are lowering the weight, and also, this can kind of be akin more to, to CrossFit, but what's worth uh, noting is all of these are kind of uh, variable and they link with each other and within one workout, you might do all three over a week, over a month. Um, but today we're basically gonna run through different body parts and how you can apply all of these solely using your own body weight. First up, how do you build a big chest with mechanical tension? Essentially, you're aiming for around six to eight reps, and it doesn't necessarily how you get those six to eight reps, um, as long as you are generating force and, and reaching those and really failing on that eighth rep. So if you can imagine a um, normal press up, right now, that is gonna be more than six to eight reps. That's kind of more uh, metabolic stress. So what you can do is you can start to put your feet elevated, therefore, increasing the level of difficulty but if you can still do more than six to eight reps what you could do is recruit someone big and heavy like Jacko oh I can't work with that <laughs> and as you can see with someone like him pushing down on you you can even start to communicate saying a bit more a bit more a bit more and he gets oh. <laughs> <laughs> with Jacko on me I'm not getting me no, 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 no. <laughs> Mechanical tension of the chest. <laughs> Next up, we've got metabolic stress of the chest and shoulders that's gonna be demonstrated by Tim. Head of handstands. <laughs> so what we're gonna be doing on this is a biomechanical drop set. Um, what Tim's gonna do, he's gonna to go to a handstand, perform as many reps as he can, stop just short of failure. Then he's gonna go into an incline push-up and essentially keep going until failure, then normal push-ups and then basically decline. So he can drop to his knees or he can do those um, on a box. So as you can see, Tim is a little bit of a beast when it comes to handstand push-ups, um, but stopping just short of failure. And this is where you really need that physiological intuition. Perfect. Feet on here. As you can see, the hardest exercise, you start with the hardest exercise, um, which is obviously handstand push-ups, um, and you progressively get easier in the movement as you get more fatigued. Um, like I said, this is metabolic stress. It's very similar to uh, Dorian Yates' type training, high intensity training, uh, pioneered by Mike Mensa, where um, they used to say, <clears throat> nice Tim, where you should leave absolutely everything on the floor. You should be in pieces afterwards. But each drop set, you stop just short of failure. It's really important because I think if you start getting fatigued, you can start drilling bad motor patterns. Nice, go to completely flat. Nice, Tim, nice. This is where it starts to hurt. This is, but, and what's important as well is Dorian Yates used to say, at the end of this drop set, if you could do another set, this wasn't hard enough. That's how hard you should be training. You should be in absolute pieces. Nice, Tim. You should be in pieces on the floor. After this, he's going to drop to his knees. Nice, on the knees to absolute failure. Nice, 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 nice. More, 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 more. Good. More, 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 more. I say, keep going, keep going, yeah, 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 more, 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 more. Nice, more, 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 five more. Good, 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 more, 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 more. Nice. And that is metabolic stress, increasing muscular hypertrophy, shoulders and chest. Yes, Tim. <laughs> when it comes to muscle damage, um, you are essentially able to lower more weight, so the eccentric phase, than you are able to lift concentrically. All I mean by this is um, you are probably able to lower more weight on a bench press than you are able to concentrically press. And it's exactly the same with a pull-up. You're able to lower more weight than you're able to actually pull yourself up. So that's why Jack at the moment has on a bulldog weighted vest and he is gonna be lowering the weight 
um, as slowly as possible, and, and this is what's key, all the way down to lockout. But I think what's really important when you are training muscle damage, number one, use it sparingly. Um, it's not something that you put into every single session because you know, your body does take a battering from it. And also two, um, your, your body is gonna try and cheat. So this is putting a lot of stress on the body. And certainly when it comes to pull-ups, you know, you are gonna try and find the most comfortable way to do that. So that's why it's brilliant to have Tim here, who is, you know, an expert at all things pull-ups, because he'll be able to make sure that Jacko is doing it correctly um, and really inducing sort of muscle damage while he's doing it correctly. But you made some great points, Tim, that this crosses over to metabolic stress as well. I'm gonna let Jacko get started so he can do his reps <laughs> and we'll, we'll, we'll jump on this. So he's gonna start chin above the bar. The focus is that we're looking to start at the highest point of his pull up and he's gotta control this movement down. You can see the generation from the force deceleration is from the shoulders and we're getting some from the elbows and our body as well. So the really interesting thing for us from a calisthenics perspective is actually because we are a weight based sport in many ways, it's calisthenics is easier if you're lighter. We're not that interested in becoming big and weak, which you can get from, quite, from training a large amount of metabolic stress. So the muscle damage here we're doing links in with a bit more mechanical tension because we're handling high amounts of force. But what we're doing is increasing muscle size. Oh, as a result, 101. <laughs> and more creative, effectively more contractile elements in the muscle. So it makes the muscle bigger, but it also increases the contractile force generation capacity of that muscle. Therefore, we get bigger and stronger. You may not have the pump, so you're not going to be the hugest dude, but it's going to mean that we actually get better transfer of training effect into calisthenics mm. as a result of focus on these methods over just pumping up at the end of a session. Having said that, there is value in that because lactic acid accumulation is going to also create some response with hypertrophy, but it's just understanding how you're going to best optimize what you want. Bodybuilders need to do metabolic stress because they get bigger doing it, but that's not a massive priority for us. You can see Dave's actually started to work quite hard. The reps start to increase in speed a little bit because he's struggling to decelerate. We can actually, with a bulldog vest, if we can actually, there's a great option on this, is we could start to strip out weight. So if we wanted to combine this with a drop set and really kind of hammer him, and then we could do, and I know, go for And what's interesting as well is exactly what you said to him, but go up again. I'm sorry, I'm going to apologise in advance for this. But you can see, because, he's, and because he's so strong in his arm, as soon as you start to cheat and pull these back ever so slightly, you can see you're engaging the lats more. This is when it starts to get a bit bodybuilding centric. Because Jacko has such good proprioception, kinesthetics awareness, because he he's comes from that body weight background, he's going to find the strongest way. And that's why he locked in, but by pulling these back, I'm pushing, it's, yet yeah, there you, you can actually see how hard, but as soon as you start there, that's where he's strongest. Yeah, and this yeah, is yeah. with muscle damage, it's always so interesting. When the goal is hypertrophy, to say, no, 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 Jack, like push him, there we go, there we go, there we go, engaging the lats, yes, and making sure that you can tweak and tailor your training partner, and just to say, right, less biceps, more lats, yeah, yeah. depending on what you're targeting. But it's exactly the same as well that if this was biceps, you could make it so specific and close grip it there, you know, or you know, even reverse it. But yeah. what we were trying to do is if we were doing the lats, is to bring it out as wide as possible. You know, whereas you were very much yeah. like that because you're so strong in your yeah. arms. The interesting thing about that, that's our muscle position. Yeah, so if we're going to try and generate speed, we want to be in here because that is then going to become here. If we're out wide, right. we're just going to come Transitioning out there, yeah. And the last place you want to be firing fast into the rotation is out here somewhere. He's like a the weakest brilliant point. point. So that's a, for like, so you've drilled yeah. those motor patterns for so long. But when you have someone who's a little bit more sort of bodybuilding centric and hypertrophy, you know, you can say, oh no, hang on, pull that back and you go, oh, yeah, yeah. so it's just depending on what your goal is. Yeah, I think that's the most important thing that, and we really encourage you guys out there and girls that you have a, something that you're working towards, like that's an actual, a, a, a goal that you can actually quantify rather than, I just want to get bigger like mm -hmm. this year now, or that, that, like if I'm going to work on a muscle up, I might have that position set up to be able to do that because yep. I've got one eye on something else whilst I'm training, mm. a different variable like yeah. this and this. It's exactly that, yeah. Out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a bit of an overview of some bodyweight basics when we're talking about hypertrophy. There's lots of different combinations and you can throw all different variables in. Everything that's applicable in bodybuilding and people have used to get massive for years in terms of drop sets, supersets pre-exhaust, it's all relevant. The only difference is we're just using body weight and you've got one eye on the outcome that you want. Getting big for the sake of it in calisthenics might not be the best thing, 
But if you're away traveling, you haven't got access to a full gym and you are like, focused on more body weight type training, you can use your body weight just as effective as you can barbell, dumbbell, kettlebell. Well said.